Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting um, a small vase of loose watercolour roses, um, red roses. I'm going to be using a limited palette of um, perylene green, sap green and alizarin crimson. Uh, my paper is Milford 100% cotton 140 pound or 300 grams weight paper. It's taped to my board and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees so that gravity will help me to paint and I'll get a nice flow of paint and water on the page and should get plenty of lovely diffusions. I drew out my roses and my vase roughly in position on the paper first, lightly in pencil. And now I'm using um, a large Pro Art Harky brush, any large wash brush will do, to wet the paper, but I'm cutting around the roses and the vase because I don't really want to paint over them um, when I put my wash in. If you want to, you can use masking fluid and mask out the roses, but I'm just going to, as I say, cut around them and leave the roses themselves dry so my wash should flow around the roses, um, leaving them nice and clean white paper for me to paint later. So I'm painting in using my Harky brush um, the two shades of green, perylene green, which is a Winsor & Newton artist quality, and sap green, which is um, Jackson's own brand um, artist quality paint. And they're both beautiful greens. As you can see, I'm just letting the paint flow and applying it sort of more thickly around the edges and particularly on the left side. Um, so I get some stronger sort of um, tones there around the roses. I keep cleaning the board as I go along just to make sure I don't get any runbacks and then flicking some water like that with my fingers into the damp wash to produce these little blooms which will give me a sort of dappled sunlight effect. And now just a few touches of colour into the glass vase just to keep that looking a little bit reflective and then a few more splashes of water across the page. And please note that I laid my board flat for flicking the water onto the page so that the little droplets stay fairly round and give me that almost sort of a bokeh background. Um, now using um, the corner of a plastic store card or you could use the end of a paintbrush or a palette knife, I'm roughly carefully etching in the shape of the stems of the roses in the vase just to give a sort of very loose indication of that and a last flick of clean water with my fingers into the painting to increase that beautiful dappled sunlight effect and now I need to leave it to dry completely and I can come back and continue with the painting It's now nice and dry and I've stood it back up at 45 degrees again. Um, please note that um, the sun is again streaming through my windows and um, the wash itself is much brighter than this. I'll try and show um, at the end how much brighter the colours are. Um, but let's continue with the painting and I'm using a small Polina Bright synthetic round brush to quickly and loosely paint in a few leaves overhanging the vase. Just using the brush to create these shapes nice and simply. This is the perylene green and I'm making up a nice rich mixture of it. And these nice simple shapes are just enough to suggest the leaves. I'm letting the brush do most of the work. I'm just flicking the brush out and allowing the shape of the brush to create the shape of the leaves. 
I can then change to a small calligraphy brush, unbranded, bought cheap from eBay, to painting the stems and the sepals and any other sort of suggested detail um, for the foliage of these beautiful roses. Uh, please excuse the um, support bandages on my wrists as I've still got a bit of a flare of my arthritis and um, the support really helps. And now using a bit of clean water and some sap green on my flat brush, I'm putting in a bit of um, sort of suggested shadow slash re reflection, just starting that off below the vase and just putting in a little bit more colour, um, reflected colour into the vase. And then just a quick spray with my misting spray. It's a hairdresser's misting spray and gives me a very fine mist. Um, just onto that area there to let a little bit of that paint run down vertically. Now this is my plastic store card or again you could use a palette knife, anything like that, to just carefully etch a vein through the centre of these leaves, curving it slightly and that um, gives us even more of a suggestion of these leaves. Now once those leaves have dried off so I don't run the risk of smudging them, I can start to paint my roses. And I'm using my third colour now, which is alizarin crimson. And my Polina Bright brush and I'm just putting in, dropping in a fairly watery mixture to start with. Into the shapes of the leaf, of the petals, then building up to slightly uh, stronger paint around the base of the rose. Now this is where having my board at 45 degrees helps because the paint will naturally run towards the bottom of the painted area and that gives me my richer, thicker paint. I can always go in and soften out or lift out some of the pink if it's too dark in places. I can also dab it with a tissue uh, just to give me that nice um, light upon the different um, curled petals of the rose. And once the first rose is, is just about dry, I can go in and paint the second rose using a very watery mixture of the alizarin crimson and painting it in exactly the same way, just dropping a little bit of paint into each of the separately drawn petals, leaving gaps of little gaps here and there of the white unpainted paper and um, allowing the paint to run down the page and pull up around the bottom of each of the petals just to give me that shadow, which I can then intensify by adding a little bit more paint around the bottom if I want to. I'm avoiding that petal that's right next to the first rose at the moment because it's not quite dry. But by the time I finish um, putting in this layer on this second rose, I should be able to paint up right next to um, that second rose but keeping it much lighter so that the tonal values of each rose um, will contrast with each other and show that degree of separation. Depending on how light the alizarin crimson dries I might have to add in a fourth colour and if I do I'll take a little bit of ultramarine blue and add that into the bottom of the roses because I think that'll make a nice deep shadow colour. But we'll see how it dries. And now a detail that I always like to add if I'm painting vases of flowers, just a few fallen petals and leaves on the shelf or the ground below the vase. Um, I think you can use that effect to sort of balance up your composition 
um, it can really add a nice kind of um, a nice line and it can create this sort of L-shaped composition here as we look across at the fallen petals um, and then at the vase and then around at the sunlit wash. I can also use these fallen petals to kind of add to the shadow below the vase. And you can stop here if you like and leave the painting like this. I think it looks really, really beautiful. But I'm going to add a bit of, um, a bit of paint spatter um, to this just to try and introduce a little bit of the pink into the background um, but you don't have to do this if you don't like it I think both ways look really really nice so I'm just spattering some inky consistency alizarin crimson here and there across the painting then I shall spatter on a little bit of the sap green as well And then once I've got enough spatter just to add some difference of texture and tone, um, I'm going to use my misting spray and sort of activate the spatter here and there. Can you see I'm placing a tissue over the roses, so I'm protecting them from the spray. Um, and as I spray on the spatter, they just kind of run and merge with the background a little bit. Um, and some of the spatter drops are still left there. And I'm really glad I did that. I think that's starting to look really pretty and just add a bit of extra depth. But now I want that to dry completely, then I'll come back and add some finishing touches. It's dried really beautifully, so I'm going to now add a bit of, um, a bit more spatter to it, but onto the dry painting so that I'll end up with more of those little dotty effects. And I think that looks really, really pretty. Um, and so just a few little things here and there. I'm going to use some clean water over the vase and just gently um, go over that area and then leave it for a few seconds um, and then use my tissue to dab off a little bit of extra light in the vase and just make that sort of stem look a little bit fainter. So I'm just getting that sort of more reflective look of the glass. And now that it's dry, I can see that the crimson has dried a little bit lighter than I'd like it to. So I've mixed up a, a tiny amount of ultramarine blue and I'm adding that into the darkest areas of shadow. And you can see that's giving me just a really nice shadow colour around the base of the roses. Um, it's making that second rose pop really well where it's a lot lighter against the dark of the rose that's at the back of the, the group. So I think once those final darker shadows have been applied, then that's, that's the end of the painting. Um, I'm going to call that finished and remove the tape. And I'm quite pleased with that. Um, you could add a little bit more detail, maybe some thorns could be added onto the stems, just some little marks on either side of the stems. Uh, maybe a little bit more definition here and there for the, some of the rose petals and shadows. But I'm going to leave it, leave it at this. Um, it's a little bit brighter than it's showing here, not much, so it's a reasonable likeness. So I hope that was helpful um, and I hope you enjoyed watching me paint it as much as I actually enjoyed painting it. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and click on the bell icon and that means you'll get notified whenever I post a new video which is at least twice a week. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.